Assembling the Bowhead bike has become more streamlined than ever before, starting right from inserting new components. Now we can take advantage of the configuration description, so even though I have a similar part number, I know I'm getting the right component inserted right from the start. But probably bigger than that is the ability to decide whether this component is going to be fixed or floating on insert. And this is a, a sticky setting, so next time it'll have the same option. For instance, right now, if I hit the green check, I know that my part is going to be inserted at the assembly origin, but it will be free floating so I can move it around wherever I need it. That saves me a few clicks. It'll be the same next time, and now I can get to everyone's favorite subject of mating. Now, there's a couple of quick ways to do this, right? We can hold down Alt to get to smart mates, drag two cylinders together so they'll become concentric with the ability to lock rotation. Or probably what I use the most, just holding down the control key, making multiple selections, and using the bar here in the contextual menu to also get concentric with the abilities to lock rotation or flip alignment. But sometimes we still need to go into the mates feature manager here to get to advanced tools like the width mate, which you should know about if you're still using distance mates. It's become easier than ever because the selections here are no longer order dependent, even for advanced width mate constraints such as free. For instance, here I'm going to take two faces off of one component that I want to freely move inside of two other spots here. And even though I, I pick these in the opposite order, it still completely solves. And now they're free to move like a locking mechanism. Of course, I need this one set as centered, so I'm going to accept that, and the job of inserting this is done. Now let's move to some hardware. I need to get some more fasteners in. I've got a few hidden with a display state. Here you can see a bushing, and I'm just going to control drag in a second one here. This one is designed to mate in quickly using mate references, which can be put in your part ahead of time. So as you drag things in, they're looking for uh, faces to be concentric and coincident with. This works pretty well. You can see this snaps in together, actually makes concentric and a coincident mate at the same time. And if I temporarily fix these components, you can see there's still rotation here. So I have to take a second step in order to lock the rotation of this component. Well, we can be a little slicker than that with uh, mate references these days. I'm going to get into another component that has a named mate reference set up. Now, a named mate reference is looking for another reference that's named the exact same. However, in the past, if it couldn't find one, it would default to the next best entities. But now you can select to only create mates when the names exactly match. And we've got the option to lock rotation on concentric mates. So it should just be one job on drag and drop. Let's give it a test. I'm just going to control drag in a second instance of this component. It mates into place and really nice because there's multiple spots with that mate reference name. It gives me a list and a preview of which one I'm trying to drop it into. Now, of course, I still break things when I do mates. It's, uh, you know, not uncommon. And I just want to flip over to a subassembly here that has a rebuild warning. What's going on? It's a subassembly with a local circular pattern. This is the spokes of the wheel. And if I look into this pattern, it's lost the central axis, the direction of the rotation. Maybe someone renamed a part or swapped something out. They didn't use PDM, and so they broke my reference. Well, now, even though this is a uh, circular pattern, a component pattern, when I right-click, I can access Auto Repair, and SOLIDWORKS makes the best guess and simply fixes the problem for me without me having to even go select that central reference and notifies me uh, of the action it took as well. All right, my assembly's looking pretty good. It's actually close to done. I'm going to use Shift-C just to collapse the entire tree here. And I want to add a little bit of information for the folks who have to assemble this at the end of the day um, and put things together. I've got a number of articulation pivots down here, and I want to add a component reference. Now, this is a really underutilized part of SOLIDWORKS. Um, sometimes you see it on electrical designs, electrical components, but it's pretty underutilized because you need to go into the properties of each component to add the information. Then you can see it here in the tree. You can you know, pull it into a parts list and bill of materials as you need, but you have to do that one by one. Well, now if you right click on the top of your assembly tree, you're gonna be able to edit all component references at one time in the tree. So for instance, here's the right that I put in. I'm gonna put in multiples of these. And don't worry about the warning that I'm getting. This is just uh, notifying me that uh, I've got multiple components with the same reference. In this case, that makes sense because I've got uh, left and right components. 
very quick to put all that information in for assembly. Uh, now, if I was sending this outside, you know, to another supplier, I probably wouldn't want to give them all the information in here. I want to hide some. And one of the best tools for doing that is the defeature tool. It's been around for a while in SolidWorks where we can defeature and hide information. And now we can do this based on a set of rules. For instance, I've set up some IP uh, classification rules here. Let's take a look at them. The way I set these up, it's three different levels of rules that's going to look at each component in this assembly for a custom property. And the custom property uh, I've named IP level, and it's either one, two, or three. At level one, um, nothing is going to be defeatured. We'll get the exact geometry. At level two, we'll just get a tight fit outline, and level three is going to be the most uh, removed here, just a bounding box. This is a lot like an advanced selection, so the criteria here, I chose to use custom property, but you can really set these up uh, with a lot of flexibility to get what you need. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here so you can see uh, the speed that SOLIDWORKS takes on this. There's a little over 300 components in this assembly. A number of them are hidden here in pieces of hardware. And we're looking into the custom property of each one, defining how they should be processed for our file export. And when this finishes up, I'm going to get a side-by-side -side preview that I can change group components and you know just see if I'm basically happy with the job that's done. Of course, I've got some additional options to add groups to these, and I want to note that you can also propagate the visual properties if you've color-coded or you want material uh, appearances to carry over. And that's regardless if you're just saving the settings for, for future use or you're making a, a new configuration or a new part. Uh, completely up to you. Now, on my side, I get sent a lot of files. Um, you know, I try to stay in one ecosystem, but people generally send me a number of step files to try to hide... Uh, some of that information and so I want to open one up but pay attention to this enable filter checkbox because this is what's going to save me tons of time when I'm dealing with a big step file this one's about 12 megabytes so I'm just going to enable that filter and let's open this step file up now a big assembly step file I've seen them you know hundreds of megabytes they take forever this filter lists every component every part that's inside that step assembly so I can just check the ones I want to look at. Maybe I know the part number, or maybe I don't. I'm just guessing, so I can generate a 3D preview. This will access just the visual properties of the step file, so it's very quick to show me this preview. I can say, hey, that is the part that I'm looking for. Let me go ahead and import model. And now, essentially, I've reached inside this step file and grabbed just the component I needed, and I'm only importing this one. This makes SOLIDWORKS the fastest at importing and reading information from step files than any other CAD program by far. Uh, this is kind of a 10x time improvement uh, in the work that I do. And here you can see I've already got uh, the component open, you know, ready to run simulations and edit on. Now, I try to stay inside of one program, but I do have to save my files outright. I defeature them. I try to still stay in the SOLIDWORKS file type, or I just use the Save As. And I want to point out, on this Save As list, if you're going to something like AR or VR, you can now save straight to the extended reality file types. These used to be an add-in extension for SOLIDWORKS. Now they're in the default Save As dialog. But if you have sharp eyes here, there's something bigger than that. The ability to save this 2024 assembly down to 2023 or 2022. That's right, we can save to previous versions now by default. It's for anyone who has SOLIDWORKS on subscription, and it goes back two years. Full support for assemblies, parts, and drawings, and you get everything. This isn't like an SP5 future version thing in the tree. You get uh, exploded views, you know, part features, whatever is in there can be saved back uh, to complete versions.